Hello and welcome to another Rice Base Designs with Grams. Today I'm going to be showing you the modular bridge design. Basically what this bridge design is, is that it is required to raid that base before you can get into that base. And I'm going to show you guys like a quick base tour of what this base has to offer, how it works, and why it's good, and why it's bad at some point. And then I'm going to show you guys how to build it, and then I'm going to destroy it. Just as a note, it is impossible to raid this base with less than, I think, eight or six people. If you, as a group, you need a minimum of that in order to properly raid it. Unless you build it a bit differently and you customize this to your own accord and place building cupboards elsewhere. If you build it exactly how as I tell you, it takes at least six people in order to raid it. Or you need somebody to be stupid in your group and leave the bridges wide open for people to just walk right inside. Which all of us happen to have a friend like that. But as long as you guys prepare yourselves and don't set yourselves up for failure, you guys will be good to go and you'll have an unraidable base. So without further ado, I'm going to show you guys what this base has to offer. How this base works is basically this foundation right here. You have your double walls on the inside where you have this triangle circle going around. It doesn't require that much C4 in order to go through in order to get to the center. But however, when you're down here on the bottom floor, you can't exactly jump up four stories and appear on the on the top of the floor that you have above you. So you kind of can't get up there worth shit. You're going to have to go through the side with that bridge connection on the side. Otherwise, you're, it's not going to work. And I'm going to be counting the C4 count a little bit later that is outside of these stone externals because I don't like including them because anyone can just spam them and increase the C4 count and everything else. But I just have it there to improvise and tell you, show you guys that it's pretty much it's pointless to go down there. But anyway, the reason why I have the building covered off the side like this in the design over there is because you have a 75% chance that they're not going to go directly for this wall right here and directly land into your cupboard to get building access. Building access will make it a lot easier for them to get inside if they happen to hit that lucky percentage and get that. Yeah, they can raid your base a lot easier. However, it's going to still be a pain in the ass because you built up all of this with pillars. Since you built it all up with pillars, they have to destroy them in order to build crap to get around it. And to do that, it's not exactly going to be well because even if they build up through the sides, it isn't going to quite work out for them that well. So anyway, let me show you guys what else this base has to offer besides the foundation. If I fly through there, you can see nothing but walls. That's why I built it off its side. So anyway, how you get inside is basically you go all the way up here through all the ladder hatches and the everything. You land here. And as you see, there's a balcony on the other side. You want to just build yourself a floor. Ah, I clicked wall. Floor here, floor straight across. It makes you stand on the edge, one in the center. Go ahead, you're free to go. Now, of course, you guys are going to be building this in twig, not stone, like immediately, like how I did. So you'll be able to shoot this out no problem, and you're back to square one. Just make sure you don't have a friend that happens to just leave it there like that. Otherwise, you're sitting ducks and it only takes like a few C4 in order to get inside. Which is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, it still takes a quite a bit, but it'll make it a lot easier for them. As you go through these doors, as you see, you got a nice scouting wall over here where you have some good defenses. You can go down here, get some good angles going here. And when you go down to the floor below, you also have some good angles going to the left and right. So you guys can get any uh, hill sniping you, and you guys have a lot of point of views in order trying to kill someone. So here's your scouting wall, and as we go inside to the actual base, oops, one more floor. Uh, I have this here because if you guys decided to, you guys can add a ladder hatch and just like shoot people who happen to be in your base, but I wanted you guys to have that idea if you guys wanted to, but I would personally suggest not to, but if you do want to, it won't affect your build at all. So as you see, this is one building cupboard, the first one that you should be building, and you have a nice spacious area, plenty of place furnaces, beds, and everything else, and you can put this up to, I think, four or five stories until you'll start losing your stability a lot, so you'll have plenty of space to do whatever you want, and as you see, I just kind of customized this to where they have a nice sniper's tower, you have some good defenses and everything else. All these side buildings and everything, it's completely optional. 
I just wanted to show you guys them because it looks really cool and you guys have an idea for the future if you guys wanted to do it. But when I build this, I'm not going to include them because you don't need them. It's not required for the base. It's really not. So anyway, that's pretty much what the base has to offer. It makes it impossible for somebody to really raid it by themselves or even as a group. Because when you are down here and you finally got to the center and you don't have building coverage because most people won't because it's a 75% chance that you don't. Uh, what you're going to have to do is that you're going to have to give it to this wall right here. Give it to the wall above it and the one on the side. Jump on the top of each other's heads and jump all the way up until you get to the floor. That, But then again, when you do that, you're sacrificing all the stability and you're still destroying half the base. So that's why I'm saying... Uh, this base is pretty much unraidable because it, if someone's going to raid you, they're not going to be able to get anything out of it if they destroy the base and they try to hardcore parkour this. So anyway, let's go ahead and show you guys how to build this, then I'm going to be destroying this. So let's move on. Go ahead and start with a triangle foundation. Now this is going to be one of the edging of your walls, and so if you consider this to be the entrance of your base four floors up, well technically five floors up, then you want to make this so it's the front of your base and you have some good flat land in front of it and a little bit behind you as well. So you're able to make a very clear bridge a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and start building our wall. Basically what we want to do is that I'm going to make that. I'm going to do this three times as you see. You have one triangle there, two triangle, three triangle. And you want to make this into a complete circle. So there's one, there's two, there's three, turn, one, two, three, turn, one, two, in the place, three, turn, one, two, three, and let's go ahead and match this together. So as you see, you got a nice big circle right in the middle and you have an exterior wall. From here, what you want to do is that you need to sacrifice a few twig in order to do this. So let's go ahead and place two squares out, the triangle foundation, place this forward here like that, if it'll stop glitching out on me. And we want to leave that one there. As you see, it's right in the center, you can see it pointing at that, and from there you want to get a square foundation, place it right against it, remove, place, 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 and place. There you go. You have your plus sign and your circle foundation around it. From here, if you want to protect your area temporarily from uh, people just destroying it and setting up some walls and all that stuff, yeah, you can place your cupboard right here because later on, that is definitely where you're going to be placing it, if this will allow me to. For now, I'm just going to place it here uh, because it is too close to my other cupboard over there. So you place it in either for these, whichever you think is the least likely spot for somebody to raid directly into. So if you have a mountain nearby, like right across here, and you think somebody's going to jump onto the second floor and go ahead and try to raid in, go ahead, put it right down there. They're not going to be bothered by it. But anyway, let's go ahead and continue. What we're going to do is that we're going to start up with some pillars, go up four levels. One, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four. So let's go ahead and do this for all five. Two, three, four. Okay, as we have all five pillars gone up, going up four levels, and there you just want to build up the walls. I'm just going to fast forward this and save you guys some effort. All I am is just putting up walls like so. That's the only thing that I'm doing. It's just building these up four levels so it meets that level right there. And then I'm just going to place some floors and that's absolutely it. So I will see you guys in just about a few seconds. I'm just going to do you the favor and just fast forward placing down these walls.
I just finished with the floors and the walls and everything and I just built up some of these walls here and just set up a door frame in the front. The reason why I did that is because I want you guys to see what it's like but I'm not going to be continuing any further going upward with this because you guys don't really need me telling you what you guys should and shouldn't do building upwards. The reason why is because I'm not a person who claims to be a strategist or something like that so you guys should find something that's really fluid for your group your friends and even for yourself to find out what is good and what works and what doesn't because uh, you guys could put a stair here just fine or you guys could if you want to add a floor frame and you guys can make it so if somebody happens to get through that floor of your uh, base you guys take another c4 going up but if you guys are confident that nobody's ever going to be on this floor of the base you guys can just play steps and not have to mess with that ladder hatch all the time so i'm not going to continue building this up any further besides just showing you guys the supports that you guys are going to need for building out here if you guys use a balcony and if you don't use a balcony how you can have make that perfect uh, perfect match get to that extra bridge area that you see out here where I'm going to be building that and I just want to clarify and fully show you guys that uh, building this is going to be uh, a little bit tricky the reason why I say that is because this extra building that you would be having out here it truly depends on what you're going to be doing so you guys can technically build the behemoth model right on out here and therefore they need to get to the fourth floor of the behemoth model in order for them to get into the space uh, granted they'll probably demolish the space before they go through all that bs mate. but however it depends on whatever base so i'm just going to do a basic structure that you see there and you guys can always tinker with it and mess with it to your own liking and make it perfect for you so it's out let's continue start building this out and what i did is that i added some doorways as you see on the left and right and added a double door in the center you guys don't have to do this but you guys if you guys want the balcony like i really like it i'm going to show you guys just how to do that real quick so i just have to set up some walls like this and it's not really all that special uh, i'm gonna actually spin that around real quick and that's all you really need to do add some ladder hatches inside some roofs so that kind of stuff you don't really need to do anything all that special i just put these here because uh, i'd like to have a good overview of anybody standing on the ground and i want to just kill them so let's place a little wall right here and i like my balcony that i have there it's gonna end up looking like this over here and now I'm going to be showing you guys how to build that excess base, how to get the entrance. The main result that you want to have established and completed at the end of merging this base into the bridge part is that you need to keep a certain amount of distance so nobody can jump on somebody else's head and jump across it. That's what you really want to accomplish here. So what that space is is that you need three square foundations of open space between whatever you're going to be landing on aka this balcony or three spaces away from the doorway if you decide to skip the balcony so how you accomplish that is by getting a square foundation and building it right below your balcony your entrance whatever you prefer whatever you're doing and you want to build out three more so one two three that is going to be my own empty space right here and this is going to be the beginning portion of my new base. So I'm going to remove these. Of course, you're going to have twigs, so it's not going to be that much of a problem. And between here and here, you want three squares of open space. So nobody can jump across it. Nobody can get across it. And there's nothing they can do about it. And if you just have the door there, you can just move this in one square closer. And you're good to go. The reason why you're going to need these two on the side because if you don't have it you won't be able to place a floor like this you won't be able to do it because it won't have the stability for it so that's why you have to set up to the left and right if you want the balcony and if you don't want to because you don't want to spend this extra material and everything it's your choice you can just build it out right from there you don't need to make the extra supports so let's go ahead and continue building that base so i'm just going to make this uh, let's say four wide and I'm just gonna set up a door here. I'm gonna set up my building covered to right there. 
I have plenty of space. It's in the center, so it, they're probably gonna Raiders are probably gonna think the building cupboard is there, but if they don't really save any effort by getting this cupboard unless they get the one on the top. That's what the main one that they want. So let's give myself some building access. I'll set up some walls and I'll save you guys the effort because uh, effort of watching me place these because it, there's nothing really all that special about it. All I'm gonna do is just gonna go up and level it to that level. So I will see you in just a second with this completed. Okay, now that I finished building my actual tower, just to give you a quick tour because uh, I think I'm just going to skip through that building process. All I did was build walls straight up, add some ladder hatches on the inside as you see, I just skipped the ladder hatches to save some time. And as you see here, all you need to do is that add a floor here, go across here, you're going to be able to attach it if you get close enough and you're careful, you'll be able to place that one, then you'll place the second. Okay, that one's not working for some reason. Then, if you happen to have this problem, just jump it, and you're good to go. Normally, you're able to just plop it right fine, because as you see over here, I don't know why I'm losing the stability, but you can place one here, place one there, and place one in the center. I don't know why I'm losing the stability over there, even though I did the same exact thing, but whatever. Even if you don't get that, as long as you get the one on the end, the one on the front, you can jump the gap real easy, you won't have any problems with that. So. There you go, there's the base building design of the bridge design. If you guys stay tuned, I'm going to show you guys how many C4s and rockets it takes in order to get inside. And once I do get inside, I'm going to show you the different scenarios and how to rate this and how to get to certain areas. So you guys can get a better understanding of what it takes in order to actually rate this thing. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start destroying stuff. Okay, I already have a ton of preloaded rockets as you see here, so I can start demolishing this base. As you see, I also have a thousand C4 in order to use for this base. And I want you guys to see the destruction if somebody happens to go through the bottom, whether of using C4 or rockets. I'm going to use rockets because most people raid with rockets, so it kind of makes sense. And you guys are going to see the huge destruction. I'm not going to get anything out of raiding the bottom, but I want to show you guys like what the raider's point of view would be. And I'm also going to be removing these walls down here. The reason why is because anyone can just increase their C4 rocket count by just adding shit tons of external stone walls. Okay, so I'm just going to use the base wall if you guys choose not to. This is the minimal it takes if you create the base, okay? So I don't particularly remember where my cupboard is i'm just going to attack this corner right here and i think i'll be fine i'll be good to go and i'm going to as you see i'm going to go very quick i don't need to fast forward because i already have these things preloaded i don't need to do anything special so i can already see my honeycombing going in there so let's go ahead and continue knocking this stuff out let's swap this out there we go As you see, I'm really destroying this. You see that entire side of the base went down. Let's go ahead and continue destroying this. And I don't know why I got another rocket out of that. But let's get this one going here. Do a reload. There we go. World's fastest rocket reload. Destroy some more of the base. Oh, did I finally get through? Now I got into the intersection. That's where if you placed your cover there, if this foundation will behave. Oh god, I can't even get up the foundation. This is embarrassing. Okay. So if you place your cupboard here, they would have found it, but since I think mine is actually over there, they won't ever see it if you place it anywhere else. This is what I mean by the 25% ratio of you actually getting it. So let's go ahead and start destroying this some more. Okay, there we go. I'm not going to fall for that and do that embarrassing jump. Okay, there we are. We're on the inside. Um, somebody would probably end up making that job. I'm just going to no-clip right on up here. Save myself embarrassment. 
and there's nothing really they can do about this. Uh, they're not going to get building access because the cupboard's behind here. They're going to have to destroy all the walls to try to figure it out. And you can already see from the demolition out here, just getting rid of this one section of wall, you lost all the battlement going straight down here. So unless they somehow boost their way all the way up here, they're not really going to get anything out of it. So let's pretend I know exactly what to do in order to get up here. So I'm going to repair just a few of these walls. I'm going to get rid of this rocket here and I'm going to give myself a building plan. The reason why I'm doing this is because I'm just going to make sure so you guys can see the maximum stability that you guys can get out of this as you decide to go upward with this. So let me remove this here. I'm just going to place a small floor and a pillar. So. This is what they're going to get to if you have maximum stability and somehow they teleported their asses inside. And you're going to need C4 for this because you're going to need the pinpoint accuracy. So if they get inside here and they have maximum stability, this is what happens when somebody has to go all the way up from the inside and don't take the bridge. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten. And the reason why I'm doing it in that pattern is because when you do this, you have to jump on top of your friend's head in order to get to the next level. As you saw, I plopped it there, 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 and there. So, I already destroyed it, now I need to use another C4, but say if it, they didn't for some reason, they had to use 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, C4 in order to get up to this level. And they still need to somehow parkour their way up on this higher level even though you got a perfect lined wall. So if they manage to get their way up here, they're going to need at least 12 C4 to destroy the floor unless they get it really close. So they could technically get right with 10, but they're going to have to do the world's best parkour team, Elf Ross, and they should better put in an Olympic game just honoring them if they happen to make the jump up here and place some C4 go up there. So there's two C4 in order to get up this way. Let's say we need two C4 here. They're going to have to knock this open. Oops. So I'm going to pretend that got knocked open. And that's four. here six. And they're going to have to knock the door off. So there's another eight. Sorry for my terrible C4 placement skills. Let me just pop that there for purposes. And so for them to get inside of here, the jump up here, they're going to need one friend to stay outside to jump up the people inside here. So that's one friend, two friend to go up here, three friend to go up to here, and they're going to need the fourth to actually stand up here to do anything. And once they get up here, they're not going to do anything because they're not going to have, even if they get the building privilege, even though... I just got here, I just placed all the building covered access and everything else. I put it all down and I made it so you're able to see what it's like with the building privilege and what I can and can't build. For this instance, I'm going to say I happen to see right through the ploy and I used the extra C4 on this in order to get to the extra cupboard that's back here, which I just removed. So let's go ahead and go up here. This is going to be the Raiders' point of view when they're trying to get inside, and it isn't going to work quite well because they're going to be able to place a floor here, but as you see, even though there's no building access out here, they're not able to do anything. And for instance, let's say they planned ahead and they kept the floor there to see if they can reach into the distance and play it and place it. But guess what? It's all building block and there's nothing you can do about it, even though you see the cupboard from here right there. So you're not going to be able to accomplish anything as a raider because you don't have building access to go over there. As you see, it's blue. There's nothing you can do because you don't have any access. So there's nothing that a raider can really do to raid it. It's pretty much unraidable because even if you use the C4, you're still not going to get inside. So you can make a base, make it really defensible, have it so it requires a bridge in order to get into your secondary base, aka this one, and it's still unraidable because they can't get down here and harker park all the way all the way up here and actually get inside. During this building process of this video, we've discussed the good and the bad of this base. We have 
discuss how to build this base and we've also destroyed good sections of it and we come to the conclusion that there's only two true ways in order to raid this base and that's to get that building covered access on the bottom floor which you only have a very slim chance of actually getting and to roof raid this base. Those are the only two ways in order to get inside. So without those being an option, on the majority part, I am labeling this base as completely unraidable, unless you get very, very lucky. If you guys like this video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I love to hear feedback from you guys, make some suggestions. I love to hear from you guys. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to see you guys in the next video out there. And good luck out there in that jerk-infested world that is Rust. Oh, 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 oh